And some news before you go. A man is in critical condition after he was shot in the head overnight on the city's southwest side. Now, police say just after 11 last night, several people were at a home on West Pyron Avenue when someone in a car pulled up and fired several shots toward that home, hitting one person in the head. Now, that man was taken to Bamsey in critical condition. Police say the shooter took off, but he was later found a few blocks away. Now, officers on the scene tell us the shooter and the victim are cousins, and they had an argument earlier in the day. And the San Antonio Fire Department still investigating a fire that broke out at a Northside home. It happened around 2 a.m. this morning, 1500 block of Pasadena Street. Fire crews on the scene telling us that the blaze started outside the home. Firefighters able to contain it from spreading inside, but the front of the home did sustain some damage. Now, firefighters say a family of three were inside the home at the time of the blaze, but they did make it out safely. Damage to the home estimated at $5,000. Arson still trying to figure out how it all started. And tomorrow on GMSA, we're talking video games. Our Erica Hernandez has the details of a study on the effects of video games on kids and socializing. Again, that's tomorrow on GMSA. I'm showing you the pollen count once more. A busy pollen count, seven allergens in the air, but oak is very high once again for the third day in the row. Mold is moderate at 980. We are seeing the front move through San Antonio as we speak. Some rain near downtown San Antonio. That cool front has arrived, and the afternoon should be nice and warm because of the low humidity. 84 degrees for the high temperature. Northwest winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Again, we're seeing that rain move through San Antonio as we speak, but into the afternoon. It should be nice and sunny guys. So very nice weather on deck for us today. Nice tomorrow as well. And then in the seven day forecast, we'll really just see a chance for rain on Monday and then again on Friday. Awesome. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Have a great day. Have a great day. Hey, it's David Elder, and this week on Texas Eats, we're traveling around the San Antonio area looking for restaurants that are going above and beyond the call of duty by transforming the way that they do business. We're driving around San Antonio looking for some curbside grub. This is one of the best spots I have seen so far in town that has adapted to the situation. We've been open for five years now, and a lot of our regulars are coming in to show our support. So God bless all of our regulars. As I'm seeing like the hamburger, the, the chicken, all those uh, essential products are going faster than others. They're ordering everything, salads, <laughs> fresh vegetables, everything. at La Gloria at the Pearl. With me here today is Chef Johnny Hernandez. How's it going, man? Going well. I know, right? <laughs> um, so much has changed right. in just a matter of a week, two weeks. Wow. And yeah. I know yeah. that you guys have had to adapt. Right. Well, I mean, we definitely have changed the model, right? We're, you know, right now, obviously, La Gloria is known for great food, customer service, and then you have this guest experience. We still want that, but now we're a grocery store. So uh, we're operating a, a grocery store. We have a lot of the essentials, but also we're adding, we've added, we've opened, this is our third day in operation. So we're almost, we all know, so almost know what we're doing, but we are uh, obviously like milk, eggs, cheese, uh, prepared meals, salads, dressings, Cereals, pancake syrups. I mean, people are walking out with eggs and saying, "You're awesome! <laughs> it's amazing! I yeah. can cook with eggs." They couldn't find. There was a lady yesterday who was practically in tears because we had fresh eggs. And I mean, they were. It's a. You know, it is. It's. It's a difficult time, and it's something very different that we've I never ever imagined to deal with. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we're doing the same thing. We're trying to nourish, you know, San Antonio through the food that that we have. We, you know, some of it is prepared, and a lot of it is coming off the shelves. And we're, uh, we've been learning on the fly. You know, I mean, Cisco are, is, you know, has brought trailers of food to help stock us. We've learned how to stock shelves. You know, and we're converting servers to, to, to inventory stockers. You know, we have a new cashier system. So all the employees um, that you know we've had to let go in the last week, we can bring many of them back through this business, this new model that we've created. So. It's important, it's needed. People are very grateful when they walk out of here. You know, they're smiling. 
We're even walking groceries to their car. That's good. <laughs> We're so into it. <laughs> now, a lot of people look up to you and the, and the restaurant community, uh, South Texas and San Antonio. You've represented San Antonio on national television. Uh, you've cooked for the president. You've done a lot. And so I think a lot of people are looking to you as, as a figure, as a role model in this situation. How you're adapting is how they need to adapt as well. And what's very important is that San Antonio understand that there's a lot of food in the city. We, we need the customers to change with us, to evolve with us. And we, I've told people, don't change your eating pattern so much. I, we know we have to adjust. But make sure that you go out to eat those, um, those same amount of days you used to, but just go pick it up, right? Because there, we need restaurants to survive and they need sales to survive. And as, as we have more sales, business owners will be able to bring more of their staff back on, you know, obviously to do what we love, which is cook and feed people. And we have truckloads of food. You know, and I think the supply chain is kind of caught up with some of these this really kind of unexpected demand. So there's plenty of food in San Antonio. There's a lot of culinary talent, as you know. We've, had a, hey, we've eaten a lot together. <laughs> we've done a lot, man. And, and, uh, <laughs> and we just want San Antonio to visit the restaurants. Yeah. If the restaurants don't receive the same customers that they receive normally, if they're not getting the same love that they were getting on a normal basis, what is your projection for the restaurants moving forward after this right. crisis? You know, it, it's, uh, it's tough to tell. Much of it depends on how long we're down. I know that, you know, we can, we're resilient and we'll come back, but I think the length of time in which we're down, I think it directly will impact, you know, uh, who has kind of that staying power uh, to maintain, right? And it's tough in the restaurant business. And what was most difficult, I think, was the adjustments day after day. I every day it was changing. Every day it was changing. And that's difficult to deal with, especially as a small business. And, you know, we've been dealing with it for over a month because catering got hit 45 days ago. And then we shut down the airport. And then we came and then started shutting down street side. So we just need the community to respond to understand several things. One, there's plenty of food in San Antonio. Two, you have to go buy food at your restaurants if you want them to be there after this is over. And, and three, we just have to stay very positive and strong and resilient. I mean, we have to come, we will come back after this as a stronger community. There's no doubt about it. That's right. You have to support local, you have to dine local, okay? And if you do anything, take a picture, tell your friends that you came to this place, use the hashtag DineLocalSA or DineLocalTX. Make sure you're using that hashtag. It'll get people aware, because some people might not even know that Lagoria has this market here, but you can let your friends know as well. Let them know that this is happening here. And we're actually, we're gonna take you real quick inside. We're gonna see what you got going on and see what people can get, because we know a lot of grocery stores are overwhelmed right now. So this is another option that you can get. Let's go check it out. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> So now we're inside what used to be La Gloria. Now it's the La Gloria Mercado, right? <laughs> Mercado. <laughs> yeah. But you don't even recognize this space anymore. I kind of think we have a nice grocery store. You have a really cute <laughs> boutique grocery store. And I love this. You have a little countertop over here yeah, for the food. Let's get a tour, good. though. Talk to me how you transform this space and what would that well, process was like. You know, we were, like I said, we're kind of learning on the fly, but obviously we, we were focused on essentials. Yeah. And, you know, we have our grains and our, our oats and stuff and our pasta, some of our, all of our dry goods in these couple, these two main sections. Mm -hmm. And then we get into beverages and then obviously dairy, proteins, prepared meals, and so and that's salads. all that's all over here. Yes. Yep, yep. So people will enter in through that door right here, right. which mm -hmm. is traditionally the way to go out to your patio yes. area. Yeah. But you're gonna come in, you're gonna see this whole mm -hmm. setup right here. You got the bags. But look at you, I mean, you're like a mini H E B. You got it going on right here, man. <laughs> we got the baggie, we got our card system for swiping, we're not taking any cash. Yeah. I mean it's a little it's some more obviously sanitary and, and less right. of a communal no cash, right? No cash. Okay, that's good to know. And so then, no yeah, cash. Yeah, so we have our dairy. We our dairy section and juices, and then we get into our proteins. We got oh, portion man. proteins. We got large bulk proteins, prepared meals. Check and this out! Down. Look at this. You guys, this is like commercial size food <laughs> over here. So, so you have the ground. This is ha ground beef. Hamburger, fajitas. We even have, we have fresh hamburger patties. We have ribeye, aged ribeye steaks. <laughs> we have chicken thigh meat, breast, bacon, hot dogs. We have a, this whole section is all pork. Wow. Different loins, shoulders, chops, and ribeyes of pork. And then we got some prepared foods. And you, you have, you, you already have kind of a quota. This is like your, this, you have a, a limit. 
set up for customers yes. when they come in, and that's good because that means you can keep things on the shelf for people who really need it. Yes. Especially our senior citizens, our elderly, mm -hmm. um, and our first responders. Are you? Do you have yep. any kind of pe like special hours for them set up? Or? We will have special hours for for senior citizens, but mainly the, I think first responders and the medical community is is really asking for it. I got several phone calls today because the medical community, when they get off of work late at night, there's no groceries, there's nothing open. Yeah. So we're, we're working, uh, we're coordinating with, uh, with friends in those industries uh, to hammer out the perfect schedule. Wow. Mm -hmm. You got all this food here. You have all the raw ingredients. Can people still get the cooked uh, food that uh, they love? From of course. So you can still get the food here. Yes, yes. Yeah, no, uh, we're, we're running our menu. We're, d we're doing delivery in a three mile radius. Wow. And we have three slots for curb pickup. Wonderful. So yes, they, they phone in orders. Uh, we're also delivering margaritas. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes. You know, quarantine can be challenging for some people. It, it can be difficult at times. But if you got a little bit of margarita at home, <laughs> it's going to make it that much better. I'll tell you that. That's fun. Well, Johnny, thank you so much for what you're doing no, here. I know that pleasure. you know it's it's hard for everyone right now, even. Uh, Johnny right. Hernandez, he's, he's just hitting him as well. And you know, but I think this is, we stay together as a community. We keep uplifting each other, especially our local restaurants, our businesses like this. We're going to see a little light at the end of this dark tunnel. We're yes. going to see a future at the end of this. We are. And thank you for adapting and creating this space for everyone here in no, San Antonio. My pleasure. Thank, thank you. you so much. When you come out to shop at La Gloria at the Pearl, you can also get the delicious food that's on the menu. So you get a little bit of cooked food and you can get all that raw food as well. Check this out. Go ahead and get some of these tacos. And of course, if you're just digging for a margarita, you wanna get one, they have their mix that they make here in house and they're serving it up. Look at that, big old bottle of tequila that comes with it. You can have that delivered to your home. This is one of the best spots I have seen so far in town that has adapted to the situation. That's creating a whole new climate for guests and they have great food. Mm. That's phenomenal. Mm. I'm Bruce Bowen. And I'm Julie Bedingfield, and we're road tripping across Texas, tasting the best local products from your HEB. Ready to hit the road, Bruce? This is gonna be fun. First stop, we're headed to San Antonio, Texas to meet up with Luis and Marsha, high school sweethearts and creators of Primo Pick Humble House Sauces. This is our salsa matcha, it's a seven dry spice chili. Not too spicy, not too sweet. This ties this whole dish together. We're headed to the pepper farm where we'll see where the flavor starts. The reason we partner with the farm is because we can get them like this. Mm -hmm. So when they ripen on the vine, they take all those nutrients in. It just tastes better. Peppers are smoked, dried and pickled, then mixed together to create the signature smoky barbecue flavor of the ancho marita sauce. Right, it's a flavor sauce, not a hot sauce. We'll show you at dinner. All right. Look at that. Basil, shrimp, shrimp, chicken. We, didn't, we already got chicken, right? Yay. All right, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> what did entering Quest for Texas Fest and being a finalist and coming in third place, what did it mean for you guys? The Quest for Texas Fest was the reason that we could go to the next phase. You know, in the industry, to go from where we were to the next level, it takes such an enormous effort and kind of cash flow that we would not have been able to do it without taking third place in the Quest. Yeah. And without HEB support, you know. We now, I know I didn't buy this, but I'm taking this home. With <laughs> oh, totally. <laughs> go for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is my sauce. With these guys, we wanted it to be cooked with food and, and the, depending on how you use it, like here, we threw these in the oven, so it lost a lot of the moisture and it actually condensed the flavor. Everything we saw today is a component we can taste in your sauces. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. You, you uh, spent all day with us. Yeah, honest food, honest people. That's what we stand by and, and that's what we have uh, to offer. Humble House and other Best of Texas Primo Picks, available at your HEB. 
later in the show. We've been open for five years now, and a lot of our regulars are coming in to show our support. So God bless all of our regulars. Coming up next on Texas Eats. And then I'm going to pour it into this cute little jar because, because, because can, it's a cute little jar. Yeah, because you can. Look at this gorgeous salad. You have the seared scallops, you have all the fresh berries and all of the wild green leaves that are on there as well. And you actually have a really fun dressing to go on top of this. Charlotte's gonna show us yes. how easy it is to make this like vinaigrette dressing. I mean, it's so easy. It's, I don't know, I think, I think we might have extra time. Should I slow it down <laughs> for yeah. the segment? So show us the dressing. <laughs> So we're gonna make a fermented blueberry and feta vinaigrette. Ooh. And can you guess where the ferment fermented part I, comes I'm from? I'm looking at everything on here, and I actually love to drink this, the kombucha, and I, I've never thought about making a salad dressing yeah. with kombucha. I mean, you can do lots of different things other than just drink kombucha. I mean, it does mix well with cocktails. Right. I know there's a big thing with that, yep. but actually it's great for vinaigrettes. And so the acid component, um, that fermenty vinegar flavor, it's gonna be our acid component for our vinaigrette. What's the first thing we do? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a, like a David Elder size handful of blueberries. Okay. <laughs> that's yes, a, that's like a, a palm a, and a yes. basketball. There so we go. go. All right. Maybe and, I was a little bit oh, aggressive. Oh. Your hand is pretty big. <laughs> it's pretty big. I'll just throw two more in. Perfect. Okay. We're going to add about six ounces of feta cheese, and I'm just. And using, this is a six ounce container. So yep. There we go. Okay, so it's all going. Dump in. it in there. There Perfect. you go. We're gonna do um, about a third of a cup of mint, but I like lots of mint, so throw in a little bit extra. Yep, and throw, yep, there we go, there I'm we just go. gonna throw it all in. Juice of two Meyer lemons. Okay. If you can't find Meyer lemons, any old lemon will do. I was gonna say, what's, why is the particularly, like why a Meyer so lemon? So this is how I describe Meyer lemons. Close your eyes and think of a lemon and how and what a lemon tastes like. That's exactly what a Meyer lemon is. It's like, I'm not gonna, I didn't close my eyes, I'm oh, sorry. I did. But <laughs> I did the thing. Okay. So how do you squeeze lemons, get the juice out of them without getting seeds into your mix? Typically I squeeze them over my hand and the okay. juice falls through my fingers or you could use one of those little Oh, look at that. Perfect. Look at that, that's actually just a lot of, oh, oh, oh. I did, it worked. That's a yes. teachable moment. Yes. Okay, beautiful. And then I'm gonna do the honey. So we're gonna do about a tablespoon and a half one more round for good measure. And then we're gonna add in uh, half a cup of kombucha. So let's go like a two second pour. Two second pour. Yeah. 
Which one of us? Okay. Oh, uh, let's go another second. Perfect. Here we go. There we I go. I love it. Okay. One for the pot, one for one me. One for me. All right, so I've got my blender. I'm gonna put the lid on, and okay. then what I'm gonna do to make the emulsification is I'm gonna turn my blender on low, and then I'm gonna slowly drizzle in my olive oil, right? So this is a, the, the full vinaigrette. This is all the elements that you need, the honey, yes. the acidity, and then you have it over here. It's even more like yes. acidity. It's like the vinegar yes. fruit. This is so cool. Yes. All right, so I'm gonna turn this bad boy on, okay. all right? And then we're just gonna drizzle in our olive oil until we get a beautiful emulsion. Oh look, and the, and the feta is just getting blended all together as well. See how it's like silky and smooth? That's like the velvet. consistency That's you're what going we're looking for. Cool. And then I'm gonna pour it into this cute little jar because because, because you can, it's a cute little jar. Yeah, because you can. And then I want you to see that really nice consistency. And look at the color. So the colors could go really beautifully on that. And then you could just store it in this jar, put the lid on it, and keep it in your refrigerator for like up to five days. I and then give us a little love drizzle. This idea. And look how much look more color. Technique. You've added so much more color to this. The flavor that you've added on here, un unmatchable, right? Because you have those seared sea scallops yes. that are on here as well. So you really get, I mean, you're getting salty, you're getting sweet, right? you're getting the acid. And those are like the elements, right? The exactly. fat, salt, and acid. That's what you Absolutely. want. Absolutely. And then obviously you can use any kind of green that you want and any kind of protein that you want, like grilled salmon. You could use beef if you like grilled chicken. I like the, the yeah. scallops here. Charlotte, you rock, you guys. And look, a little, little salt on top. Little salt. Pop it with that salt. To get this recipe, head on over to ksat.com slash Texas Eats. Follow the links. It's right there at the top. Look for the picture of this gorgeous salad. Get this dressing. I mean, made that in a flash. Great Super job. Super easy. I'm gonna eat a scallop. You want a scallop? I am going to do, I'll eat a scallop. I'll eat a scallop. That is amazing. Mmm. Mm. Acid. It just works. Look, I'm over here stealing from another scallop. I know. And you know what? You have the fresh berries, you have the scallop, so you have that savory, you have the sweet, and then you and have the your salty greens. salty from the feta? Yes. Ugh. What? Dude, feta. It's like the super glue of Forget the Forget about it. Cheese world. I love it. <laughs> Later in the show, as I'm seeing like the hamburger, the, the chicken, all those uh, essential products are going faster than others. Coming up next on Texas Eats. We've been open for five years now, and a lot of our regulars are coming in to show our support. So God bless all of our regulars.
All right, so now we're over here off of Austin Highway at l, l Hawaiian Barbecue. Coming up right here, we just ordered some food. It's gonna be Sarah Yi. She's the owner out here at the restaurant. Sarah, how's it going? Aloha, David. How are you? We're getting by. I know that this is a tough time for a lot of restaurants right now, and that you guys have a family pack available for people that come and order here. Talk to me a little bit about that. We sure do. We just made available on our menu our family pack, which consists of our very famous oh. Hawaiian-style barbecue chicken. <laughs> Gotta have the sticky white rice. Oh my goodness. And of course, Hawaiian-style macaroni salad. This family pack comes with four fountain drinks as well. Nice. We do uh, delivery through Grubhub. They're our partner, or people can phone in their order. We'll take the payment on the phone with a credit card. They can call us when they pull onto the parking lot and we'll bring it out to their car. How wonderful is that? And of course, during these times too, um, everybody's really concerned about health and safety, and you guys are going the extra mile to make sure everything is even that much cleaner, that much more sanitized, right? Yes, well, we've always uh, been able to earn 100% on our San Antonio health inspections. We're going the extra mile on top of that 100% right now. So it's a team effort by all of my employees. When it comes to the impact that this has had on your restaurant, um, have you felt that strain? Have you had to let employees go? Like, how has this impacted you? Well, of course it's been impactful. Uh, we've seen the, the dip in sales, but We've been open for five years now, and a lot of our regulars are coming in to show our support. So God bless all of our regulars. We've had to trim our schedule. We're working well with our crew so that they understand, and we're trying to rotate them so that they can always all come in for the limited hours that's available. How are you gonna adapt moving forward? Well, we are going to be in compliance with all the mayor's mandates. Uh, we are staying informed. We are, like everybody else in the industry, just going through this one day at a time. Uh, once it gets to the point where uh, another mandate is issued, we'll certainly be in compliance. I don't know when, I don't know what that will be like, but right now we've, uh, through necessity, been able to master the art of curbside service. There's a lot of moving parts, but uh, I'll tell you, I've got the best crew ever, and if it weren't for them, uh, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing now. The food smells absolutely amazing. If we had a smell of vision I would just be wafting it onto you guys This here. is our famous Hawaiian-style barbecue. I mean, five years here in San Antonio, a really, a truly a San Antonio staple when it comes to Hawaiian food. This is where you come to right here off Austin Highway. Thank you so much for all of your time. The food looks fantastic, and it's definitely a mix. If you've never had Hawaiian food, mix it up. Come out here, you get the rice, you get the family pack with the chicken. It'll blow your mind and make you feel like you're on a tropical paradise inside of your own living room. It's fantastic. Thank you so much. Aloha. Later in the show. <laughs> Normal, the fanciful David, really. <laughs> you almost went there. You didn't sound like it. <laughs> it was the cadence of my voice. Yeah. Coming up next on Texas Eats. As I'm seeing like the hamburger, the, the chicken, all those uh, essential products are going faster than others.
Welcome back to Texas Eats. Well, if you're traveling around San Antonio and you're looking for a place to get some raw meat, we're talking ground beef, steaks, chicken, anything like that, we got the perfect place for you. This is Beatrix Meat Market. They're from Poth, Texas, but now they have this location here off 281 and Bitters here in San Antonio, and they have a lot of different options for you. And unlike some grocery stores, they usually have a lot on the counter. Let's go check it out. With me right here is Carter Ray. How's it going, man? Give me some elbow. Doing good, man. Now, talk to me about how you guys are adapting to the current restrictions here across, I mean, the United States, but especially here in San Antonio. Yeah, we've seen a, um, a huge need, a huge demand on our supply. So we deal with local ranches. Uh, it is kind of putting a little pressure on those local guys. Right, I mean, I was gonna, you can't just randomly expect the cattle to be ready and then made and cut into steaks. I mean, yeah. it, it takes time, it's that kind of process. Like a t-shirt or a pair of <laughs> yeah. shoes. It takes time to develop these products. Here at Beatrix, you have a lot of different options. Usually, there's summer sausage out here that's absolutely incredible. Yeah. But it's all about the steaks. It's about the meat products that you offer. You also have what, chicken, you have pork. Chicken, uh, we have whole fryers, breasts, thighs, drumsticks. We know the demand on it, so we're trying to get ahead of the ball game with especially the chicken, pork, and beef side of things to where we have time, uh, my guys have time to start getting back to usual, having full counters of the, the fajita pinwheels and marinated chicken breasts and stuff like that. But what we really want to do is continue to keep our fresh counters full. Um, so raw goods, I get three to four trucks a day in fresh. Um, this morning I got 50 cases of chicken breasts. Um, wow. Whole fryers, we have plenty of. Um, but yeah, usually we have a lot of salami, jerkies, uh, dried sausages, but again, those products take time. So uh, we're trying to revamp all that stuff and how we do it in our supply chain down the road. How do you anticipate this to affect your business going down, like down the line here, a couple weeks from now, maybe a month from now, a month or two? Yeah, I hope that the product that I'm bringing in obviously will sell. Um, the trick is, is keeping enough product to keep it fresh. I'm actually even talking to uh, another local um, family owned meat market and seeing what they're doing, where they're buying from, because all of us are uh, in it together. So I, I love that in the midst of all of this darkness, there's been this light of community that has sure. like, just really come from everything. And so you have an outlet, so to speak, for these people who are looking for these products, yeah. and they're here, and like you said, you guys are managing that and making sure that these products are available to people as long as you can get them available, for right? Sure. As I'm seeing like the hamburger, the, the chicken, all those uh, essential products are going faster than others. Um, if we can put together some sort of pack Actually, we're hiring part-time help. Um, I'm always looking for helping hands to help assemble those packs, as well as just to, to prep items and our specialty items as well. There you go. So if you're looking for a job right now, if you're looking for something, Beatrix needs help. Yeah, we need meat cutters. Uh, they, they need, need some staff. meat cutters. They yeah. need a lot of staff right now. So this is definitely a source or a place that you can come to to try to look for employment. And it's also a place where if you're looking for some burgers, you're looking for some steaks, chicken, pork, anything like that, this is the spot to come sure. to. Give me some elbow, man. Thanks, David. Good luck with everything. I know you guys are still killing it. You guys are just, I mean, what a big part of Texas history already. Yeah. And now to take this leap with this new history, this new reality that we're in, just good luck to you, man. Thanks. And good luck to everybody here. Later in the show. You got the stuff? I got the stuff, <laughs> baby. Look there at you that. Go. There's oh, your brisket, man. brisket rib and chicken plate. Coming up next on Texas Eats. <laughs> Normal, the fanciful David, really. <laughs> you almost went there. You like <laughs> was the cadence of my voice. That yeah. Started.
ready to put a spring in your dessert with this very delicious fresh berry tart. And absolutely. Scott's gonna show us how to do it. How do you make this thing? It looks absolutely delicious. Filling is really simple. It's fresh fruit. It's a few simple ingredients all mixed together, throw in the oven. The pie shell is really simple. So if you have an obviously an old fashioned recipe, you wanna make your own pie dough, absolutely go ahead and do that. What's great about this is these are already ready to go. Cool. They are, uh, this is the Texas Pie Company. So Quest for Texas Bex from there a few years back. Uh, Julia, Texas Pie Company in Kyle, Texas. Local, you can only find these exclusively at HB, which is really cool. She also makes a full size version of pie dough puck. Oh, nice. But uh, we do the pie dough shells, so really simple. So these get baked off and they get left to cool. And so these are ready to go. Then we're gonna make our mix. They'll go back in the oven. That is all you have to do. So really simple. So super simple. Absolutely, really easy. So we have two cups of all of our fruit. So disclaimer, so during the season, berries are fresher than others other times of season. So if you need to, if you taste the fruit, obviously you want to taste everything. If the strawberries or blueberries or raspberries are sweeter, you can obviously back off the sugar a little bit. If, it's, mm -hmm. if you know there's a season we are entering into where they're not quite as sweet, you can always add a little more sugar. That's my one tip for, for how to do That's the That's a good tip. But during the summer and everything, usually they're sweet enough to where you can add this exact amount of sugar and you should be good to go. But if you like it a little less sweet, very just sweet, leave out the sugar. That's a teachable moment. <laughs> so we're gonna <laughs> So we're gonna go ahead and add our sugar. Okay. Followed by our we have a couple tablespoons of flour and cornstarch, just gonna kinda thicken everything oh, up. Oh, okay. You can add them all in there. We've got the juice and zest of one lemon. So it's about a teaspoon and teaspoon. Eye of Newt. Throw in there, exactly. So you can use vanilla extract or you can use vanilla bean paste. I got a little, this beautiful little spoon to scoop out our vanilla bean Am paste. Am I supposed to taste it first? Yeah, or? you can totally do it as well. We like to use this instead of vanilla extract every once in a while because you want those little flecks of the vanilla bean to kind of oh, speckle the dessert. Is this how you do that? Yep, so it totally doesn't matter. You can use either one. Both will give that great vanilla flavor. This will just give you a little more punch to your actual finished product. And then... So I love the little look flex. How lovingly you're doing that with that little tiny spoon. Do you like all of the little <laughs> feed paste out? How is this? Does Perfect. This exactly. <laughs> You'll notice there's not a lot of liquid in this, but the longer the sugar sits on the berries, obviously the some of the moisture is going to get wicked by the flour and cornstarch mixture. The longer this sits, the more of a kind of a gel that will make because it'll get a little huh. bit thick, so the liquid gets a little gelled. So I let this sit for about 15 to 20 minutes before I actually start filling up the pie shells. And um, you can obviously make this mixture overnight if you wanted to. Like if you want to make the fruit mixture, let it kind of macerate overnight. You could add your flour and cornstarch later. Uh -huh. And that way the sugar just kind of sits on the berries. It makes that nice juice. You mix it all together. That'll make the pie a little juicier. And you'll notice the more you mix it, obviously the juicier it's getting. The raspberries are starting to kind of explode and get yeah. a little crushed in there, which is totally fine. You can see that it's already kind of becoming yeah. that gel that yep, you're talking exactly. about. Yeah. The amount of filling you want is about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half. And this makes the amount of mixture, and this again depends on the size of your strawberries, makes enough for about 12 pies. Okay. Or 12 yeah. mini tarts, I guess you'd say. And I love that with the vanilla bean paste that you're using, like you said, you see the little flakes. Yeah, you get the, little flex. It just adds that little extra flakes. little culinary kind of, you know, flair to it. Oh, you, you look real fancy bean. with that, yeah. I'm telling you, it takes the pie from just normal, regular tart to a fancier, kind from of fanciful. Normal. To fancy. <laughs> Normal to fanciful, David, really. <laughs> you almost went there. You didn't sound like <laughs> it. was the cadence of my voice that started yeah, to slow down. It went so you <laughs> normal. <laughs> All right, so we'll put it into the oven. You got it. 350 degrees, ready to go. Okay. You said about 20 minutes? 15 to 20, 15 to 20 minutes, depending on, I guess, the fruit as well. I'm a, I'm a whipped cream on my tart or pie guy. I know a lot of people are like, you gotta have everything a la mode with ice cream on it. But I have, I didn't have any ice cream because I figured if I'm gotta eat it, I'm gonna do it the way I Whip like cream it, right? it up. So I'm gonna let you do the honors. So our, uh, this is our ready, ready whip. It's just really simple. This is a great way, especially like if the kids are involved, this is a great way to get them uh, have a little fun if they're making pies with you. This and is that is it. And you can garnish it with some fresh nuts. You can do a little strawberry syrup. You can do really kind of whatever you want to it. But this is a really quick way. And this, the great thing about these is these travel really well. If you had to wrap these in plastic wrap, you'd have about 12 of them. You're going to a party or a picnic or anything, wrap them. When you get there, you can just do the whipped cream. And you know what I love about this too is even though it's the springtime and you know the berries are fresh right now, you can use this totally during the 4th of July yeah. and yep. you can have the ultimate 4th of July. Is this exactly is like an all year round oh, kind yeah. of thing. You know what I mean? This is and excellent. The, yeah, and in the dead of winter, when the berries aren't as sweet, you can always use frozen. So frozen works just as good. So there you go. The pie dough is actually really, really excellent as well. Wow. It's really good. <laughs> I feel like I have some on my mind. I'm saving there. myself for something more chocolatey. Mm. Okay. Is there more chocolate somewhere? Well, there should be. Absolutely delicious. You made this so quick. You made it look so easy, easy. too. You guys, the recipe's online, ksat.com slash Texas Eats. 
Get your fresh berries, make some delicious tarts. You're gonna blow away your friends, your family, and you'll be surprised at how easy it is. These are really good. They're hard. These yeah. are really messy. Later in the show. They're ordering everything. Salads, fresh <laughs> vegetables, everything. Coming up next on Texas Eats. Hey, David, how you doing? Doing good, man. You got the stuff? I got the stuff, <laughs> baby. Look there at that. Go. There's oh, your brisket, man. brisket rib and chicken plate. Look at that. We're back out on the road again today looking for restaurants across San Antonio that are having to adapt and change the curbside delivery here with the new restrictions. And now we're out at Smoke Shack. With me right here is Chris Conger. I just put in an order for some food. Hey, David, how you doing? Doing good, man. You got the stuff? I got the stuff, <laughs> baby. Look at yeah. that. There's oh, your brisket, man. brisket rib and chicken plate. Look at that. Now, there's a lot of things that are changing right now, but one thing that you can depend on is that the food is just gonna be delicious, just like this when you come out to Smoke Shack. It's still gonna be just killer. Same food, hadn't changed. And you guys, of course, have had to adapt to all the new restrictions. You know, our business model has completely changed. Um, we're adapting, we're, we're figuring out to go drive through, curbside. We're even delivering uh, you know, a five mile radius. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, a lot, it's, it's a lot to take in. Uh, but we got to do it. Talk to me a little bit about what people have to do to come up here and order and then get their food. So you drive up, you, you, you place your order, and then you're going to go park, and we're going to bring the, the food out to you. Nice. You just park right over there. Food comes out. Yep. And maybe you're helping out that day, but you also have a lot of other helpers that are out here as well. And you yeah. guys are doing everything you can to make sure everything is sanitized, and you guys oh, yeah. are every doing hour, the utmost, right? Even, I mean, wiping down a credit card machine, everything. What we used to be uh, used to is, is out the window, and. And now we're just trying to figure it out again, so. If people don't make this a regular stop, what would happen to the restaurant? What would happen to you guys? Worst case scenario, we would have to close it down. Yeah. Um, we had to close down our bar temporarily, uh, the pig pen. We do have our meat market open, and you know we're bringing in more uh, essential goods that people need in everyday, uh, everyday life. But I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're working our hardest. We still have over half of our employees. Um, yeah, I'm so thankful for them to, that they want to still want to come to work every day. And you know, I just I just thank God and 
Uh, you know, it, it, it's going to be all right in the end, but we got to do our part right now to feed everybody. So. You said you got some essential items coming in. Are you going to have like kits prepared for people? Well, right now we, we do some kits. We've got like a steak kit with wine and, and our carne guisada is really good. It's, it's like 10 items. Uh, I think we're going to do a burger pack, like, you know, an all-American burger hot dog pack that's going to come. Since all these food distributors have, they have excess on hand because a lot of restaurants are shutting down. So <clears throat> we're able to order whatever we want and we're just, you know, putting them into smaller packs in the meat market and selling them there. Chris, thank you so much, man. Good luck to you guys. I know it's going to be a struggle for a while, but support local, dine local. we got to make sure we keep doing this. And come out to Smoke Shack if you're in the area and you're looking for some of the best barbecue in Central and South Texas. Hell, why not even in the whole all of Texas? You're looking for some great barbecue. This is where you come out, man. This is there great stuff. Thanks, David. Thank you. I'm going to take a bite of this. Look at that. That's what's up. I was just going to take a bite. I think the whole thing. <laughs> Coming up next on Texas Eats. It's been very challenging for everybody in the restaurant business. We go from two weeks ago, we were scrambling for supplies to get everything we could, and now, you know, business went like that. So we're all adjusting to it and trying to do the best we can. All right, now we're driving up to a San Antonio staple. This restaurant has been here for decades, serving the San Antonio community. And I mean, now they're having to adapt. Just like everybody else, the restaurant's hurting. This is Good Time Charlie's. Now we're gonna talk with Millard Stetson to see how they're adapting to the new climate. We'll pull up, they got their new little curbside. How y'all doing? Good, good, and you? Doing great. Look at that, that's a whole lot of onion rings, man. That's what, you, I mean, y'all are known for your onion rings. Yes, we are. It's, they, I can smell them from here. They'll smell incredible. Talk to me a little bit though, what has it been like? It's been very challenging for everybody in the restaurant business. We go from two weeks ago, we were scrambling for supplies to get everything we could and now, you know, business went like that. So we're all adjusting to it and trying to do the best we can. We're not gonna let anybody go. Um, these people have been with us a long time. We're gonna do everything we can to, to keep them working. They wanna work. They don't wanna stay at home. These people are, are motivated and we're doing everything we can to keep them busy. And, you know, is the full menu available for people? Yes, absolutely. Yes, it is. What would you say so far, people in quarantine, when they're ordering delivery, what do you say, like, the most important thing or the most popular item that they're ordering? Well, this is this is close. <laughs> if, if, it's, if it's not top of the list, there's not much in front of it. But, uh, you know, so far, a lot of home uh, comfort food, you know, chicken fingers and chicken fried steak. But we've got a couple of broiled catfish going out right now. Uh, that's the next delivery. So. The range of options on the menu. They're ordering everything, salads, fresh vegetables, everything. We've been here 40 years plus, and we were in our late 20s when we started, and we were young, dumb, and bulletproof. We've been through a lot of ups and downs and a lot of challenges, and it seems like 
this could be the biggest challenge, this what's going on now. But, uh, you know, I, I feel real fortunate. I have a partner to stand by me and, and with the staff and our families. And, we're going to get through this. Get through it together, that's yeah. right. Dine local, support local. We keep pushing that message, Please. but we have to to make sure that the restaurants that we love are going to be here when this whole crisis is over. And of course, getting great food like the onion rings. Man, I'm staring at those onion rings. You got a lot. But lots of great food out here, of course. They're classics. I mean, I come in here, I love getting just a good old cheeseburger. That's one of my favorite items to get. So you guys, make sure you're coming out. You can come right here off Broadway. Hit up Good Time Charlie's. They're still serving up food. And uh, when you're hungry and you're waiting, you can also honk the horn if you want to. That's right. Stuff. That's right. We'll yeah. respond. Yeah. That's right. All right, you guys. Good luck. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. We'll get through this. We'll get, yeah. Thanks, <laughs> God. Before we say goodbye on today's show, I want to give a shout out to Street Fair SA and thank them for sponsoring this year's Munch Madness food truck competition. As you know, many businesses and restaurants are being affected by the coronavirus, and Street Fair SA is no different. Once this crisis is passed, you gotta come check out Street Fair SA. It's a great place to bring the whole family, relax, and get some awesome grub. So make sure you follow us online, ksat.com slash Texas Eats. And of course, follow us on our social media at KSAT Texas Eats, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Thank you so much for watching today. And of course, watch Texas Eats every Saturday right here on KSAT 12 at 10 o'clock in the morning. Stay safe, San Antonio.